Hello, everyone. My name is Timothy Triple, and I'm a software engineer at Google on the Open Titan team. Today, I'm going to talk about fuzzing hardware-like software, which we got a brief introduction to in the last paper. Uh, this was uh, work I started back in 2020 as a research intern on the Open Titan team and continued during my PhD at Michigan. This was joint work with my PhD advisor, Professor Kang Shin, uh, my host, host team at Google, including Alex Chernikovsky, Garrett Kelly, and Dom Rizzo, and my PhD co-advisor, Professor Matt Hicks. Since the inception of the integrated circuit, Moore's law and Denard scaling have enabled us to exponentially increase the number of transistors packed within, shown here in orange. This uh, trend was also accompanied by dramatic improvements in single-threaded performance in blue, clock frequency in green, and power in red. Unfortunately, about 15 years ago, these, some of these trends started to level off due to fundamental physical limits. To combat this and further push computational limits, computer architects decided to increase the amount of on-chip parallelism. And while this parallelism started off homogeneous in nature, it has become heterogeneous over time. As we'll see on the next slide, domain-specific accelerators have become commonplace. Unfortunately, increasing performance is never free. With increased heterogeneous parallelism comes increased complexity. Take the Open Titan SOC, for example, which is designed to be a simple microcontroller for security applications. Even Open Titan has 34 different IP blocks. This includes specialized IP for security hardening, such as the alert handler, and multiple cryptographic accelerators. With increased complexity comes increased verification efforts. In fact, today, it is estimated that hardware engineers often spend an estimated 70% of their time just verifying their designs. Moreover, this complexity and verification burden have also unfortunately led to a recent surge in hardware vulnerabilities. To identify flaws in complex SOCs before tape out, hardware engineers often deploy several pre-silicon verification strategies. One popular approach is a dynamic verification technique called constrained random verification, or CRV and it's implemented in one of the most widely used DV frameworks known as UVM. Here, I show a typical architecture of a UVM-style test bench, which at a high level generates random sequences of inputs, drives them into the DUT, and monitors its response. When using this technique, the question DV engineers often ask themselves is, when are we done? Since exhaustive verification is not an option for large, complex designs, the answer is typically when broad coverage is achieved, for which there are several metrics, including HDL code coverage, FSM or finite state machine coverage, functional coverage, et cetera. Unfortunately, optimizing coverage is somewhat time consuming. It often requires manual intervention on behalf of hardware engineers and requires intimate knowledge of the DUT, something that can be challenging when verifying the integration of several IP blocks. To overcome this, researchers have proposed using coverage information to inform test vector generation, similar to coverage-guided fuzzing techniques in the software world today. Unfortunately, these techniques are often tailored to specific designs, for example, CPUs. Rather than adapting fuzzing to hardware, we ask, can we fuzz the hardware directly with software fuzzers in a design-agnostic manner? Since we already translate hardware to software for simulation purposes, we argue for fuzzing the software model of the hardware directly with software fuzzers. To do so, we leverage Verilator, an open source HDL compiler, to translate RTL hardware into a software model that can be instrumented during compilation and fuzzed directly with coverage-guided gray box fuzzers like AFL. Unfortunately, as you probably guessed, it's not quite that simple. Uh, as I will discuss in the next couple of slides, there are three key challenges associated with designing a generic fuzzing harness or test bench that can interface hardware simulation models with software fuzzers. The first challenge is that software fuzzers are designed to detect program crashes or hangs, the signal incorrect program behavior for a given set of inputs. 
However, unlike software, hardware is not inherently executable. To simulate hardware, tools like Verilator create a cycle-accurate hardware simulation binary, or HSB, by first translating the HDL to a software language like C++, and then compiling and linking it with a test bench and simulation engine. Alone, HSBs have no way of knowing when out-of-spec behaviors have been encountered. Because there's no such thing as a hardware sanitizer like there are software sanitizers that can trigger a crash when such behavior is observed. To detect such behaviors during simulation, DV engineers often deploy a couple of different techniques in their test benches, including invariant checks, uh, such as system bear log assertions, or golden model checks. To adapt these checks for fuzzing, we ensure that both types of behavioral checks in the test bench translate to C++ constructs that, when compiled and violated, send the HSB process the abort signal so that the fuzzer can detect this behavior. The second challenge is that most software applications, for example, a document or image viewer, activate entire sequences of state transitions for a single, from a single dimensional input, such as a PDF or a JPEG. As a result, most software fuzzers generate a single input file or vector of bytes to feed the system under test, as shown here. Alternatively, sequential hardware requires several single dimensional input vectors or two dimensional inputs spread over space and time to achieve a similar effect. We address this issue by designing a hardware fuzzing harness or test bench that interprets fuzzer generated input files in two dimensions by reading fixed size chunks of data from the fuzzer generated input file and feeding them to the DUT one by one as individual test cases spread over time. Lastly, the third challenge involves building a generic fuzzing harness or test bench that can interface with several IP blocks. To address this, we take advantage of the fact that most hardware IP blocks interface over a standardized bus protocol and start by designing a test bench around the TileLink Uncached Lightweight, or TLUL, bus protocol that is popular in RISC-V designs uh, such as OpenTitan. Our test bench maps raw data from fuzzer-generated input files into a sequence of bus transactions that drive the DUT. Unfortunately, most bus protocols, including TLUL, require specific temporal sequences of inputs that create exploration barriers for fuzzers. In other words, the fuzzer gets stuck trying to synthesize an input file that, when dissected temporally, produces a series of valid bus signals. To address this, we design a bus-centric grammar and extend the fuzzing harness shown here to essentially decode fuzzer-generated input files into a sequence of valid bus transactions that drive the DUT. Essentially, we create a mini fuzzing ISA of sorts. We describe our fuzzing instructions here. We implement three basic instructions, including a wait instruction, which simply advances the DUT clock a read instruction which performs a TLUL read operation, and a write instruction which performs a TLUL write operation. To evaluate our approach, we fuzzed five open source IP blocks from the OpenTitan project and measured the amount of time it took for AFL to identify a bug we had implanted in each design. In the first four designs, the AES, HMAC, KMAC, and timer blocks, we implanted synthetic bugs that were used in the hack -a competition as shown in the table here. In the last design, the OpenTitan alert handler, we implemented a real bug that was previously found in the wild and detailed on the OpenTitan GitHub issue 6408. For each design, we reused several system bear log assertions that had already been developed by the OpenTitan DV team and added some additional ones to detect the incorrect hardware behavior. Additionally, we seeded the fuzzer with functional TLUL operations that properly initialized each design for example, for the crypto blocks, our seeds simply initialized each design into a state such that, such that they may begin encryption and hashing operations. And for the remaining two blocks, we simply reset and enable them. Across several trials, uh, uh, fuzzing trials of each design, we are able to detect four out of five bugs in less than 10 minutes and all bugs in less than 10 hours. In addition to finding bugs, we were interested to see if by fuzzing software models of hardware, we were able to maximize hardware coverage metrics 
like HDL code coverage. We fuzz the same five OpenTitan IP blocks that we talked about in the previous slide, but this time we seeded the fuzzer with empty seed files. And on the right, we plot the results. We see after 60 minutes of fuzzing, we get over 80% HDL line coverage in four to five hardware designs we study. We drew some interesting insights from this experiment as well. Since Verilator generates straight line C++ code for both blocking and non-blocking uh, system Verilog statements, and injects conditional code blocks or basic blocks for system Verilog assertions and cover points, we found that simply optimizing test generation for edge coverage of the software model, as is the default behavior of AFL, translates to optimizing for code, FSM, and functional coverage of the H RTL itself. Essentially, by nature of Verilator's construction, we are maximizing hardware coverage simply by maximizing coverage of the software model. Lastly, we performed several other evaluations in the paper to compare hardware fuzzing against some both existing DV techniques like CRV and some prior hardware fuzzing approaches. In the interest of time, I'm not gonna dive into these results, but if you're interested, I would refer you to our paper. In conclusion, fuzzing is an effective strategy for automating hardware DV and is made practical and performant using bus-centric grammars and harnesses. What's really exciting about this work is that it opens the door to an entirely new wave of hardware testing strategies, including developing advanced coverage metrics, uh, developing test generation schemes, and even hardware sanitizers to identify common bugs. If you're interested in this work, we invite you to check out our open source code base on GitHub at the link here. Thank you for listening, and I will take any questions.